Hello, Jadvika. How are Hello. you? Hello. I'm late, but I want to participate. So I... <laughs> Very kind of you to join. I mean, yeah. we've been in touch for many, many months by now, and I've never actually seen your face. So I'm really yeah. honored. <laughs> no, no, no. We actually did see each other first meeting on the first the meeting. Nations. On May. Yes. When mm. we were talking about different uh, fitness, uh, like um, different goals. I yeah, guess, yeah, so. yeah. Yeah. So we actually met, like, I think it's over a year now, but uh, we did. <laughs> <laughs> That's the power of kind of, I would say, interconnected international world. Uh, I definitely think, well, this was the same with Deb. We met also actually on LinkedIn, I would say maybe a year ago. And here we are doing these workshops. So yeah, I'm really happy you stick around. Nice. And you are even in the WhatsApp group. So um, I know it's always hard anyway for, you know, to participate and because it's you don't see anybody and... That's why we do these sessions with Deborah. So you, Deborah just told me before you joined in that you joined her event last time. Yes. How, how did you like it? And that was timing couldn't be better. Uh, so I recently, Matteo knows, so I'm just going to say it. Uh, and today I feel stronger. So I'm just going to say it out loud. Uh, yes. I lost my dad recently. Mm -hmm. And uh, this kind of meetings help me uh, kind of uh, rebuild or, you know, because we are still, I feel we are still in pandemic times, but people are more free now to again engage and connect. Uh, but I think these meetings are very helpful anyways to get this, I don't know, like um, more balance in yourself. Mm. If that makes sense. Yeah. It does. Healing. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. So, Deborah, I actually your hug in the morning that you you told us about your wrapping uh, hands around like and uh, I do it since then. Maybe I didn't do it one or two days, but uh, I've added it to my uh, morning routine. That's why we have the thing that says progress, not perfection. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's perfect. That's good. I'm glad to, that you're able to do that. Yeah, Thank you for that tip. and and you know that's that's the power why I think these sessions are really cool and different than intonations. You know, I love intonations, and I used to do there like a lot of webinars myself. But I feel it's missing this consistency of if you want to dive in into one topic, you know, like now what we do this series of progress not perfection, and pretty much if you think about it, it's relevant for anybody whether you know somebody passed away or whether you're not getting a promotion at work or whether you struggle with your diet or you know you're angry with somebody it's all these related topics that are very relevant and very present and i feel like you know people now like you mentioned the pandemic people missing this uh, connection of really or even missing maybe they know a lot of stuff like yourself I, I could notice from the discussions that we had over the you know coming months you're very I think advanced in terms of your mindset the way you think about stuff and mm -hmm. that's definitely a heads up already and congrats on that because a lot of people don't have this depth but still it's hard even if something like that happens some tragedy and you need, and this is why I'm so grateful to hang out around Deb, because sometimes, you know, and I've done this exercise that we might do today. Uh, maybe you have done it last time. And I was really surprised what stuff came up for me. And I, I consider myself as a person that I got stuff my together, you know, so it's so, it really shows. And yeah, I know Deb, you're laughing because <laughs> you've been there and, and that's, and that's the power to hang out with people that are smart, that are like-minded and that want to, you know, do something good in their world. And yeah, so happy, happy for you to be here. Yeah, thank it's you for that too. It's part of being a human being, right? We're going to always have, no matter what, we're always going to have stuff. I am Polish originally. So we have a saying back home that we are, and maybe it's both optimistic and pessimistic at the same time, but we are born stupid and we die stupid. Hmm. We learn a lot, but we don't know any, like we know so small <laughs> still. Yeah. Yeah. We know little because we just need to Im implement. This is what I always say. I call it internalizing, um, making sure that what you learn, you know, what you go, you go through your head, through your hands, to your heart, and you need to make sure that you connect. Like this is what, why I love 
where we have the depth exercise here because it's very practical, hands on. You know, what comes up for you? What do you do? You need to write stuff down. You need to think and you need to connect the dots. And I think this is what is missing, like what you said in the, you know, people we learn, we know a lot. We live in an age where the information is everywhere and abundant, but it doesn't mean that, you know, you gain wisdom. I think that's a completely different route. Um, so, yeah. yeah, knowing does not change anything. <laughs> no. <laughs> right? All right. No, 100% not. <laughs> uh, we have um, somebody's joined us here. Scandi Bumsy. Hello. Do you know, Hello. Do you know Scandi Mateo? I don't think so. Hi, Scandi. Hello. Welcome. Where are you joining from, Scandi? UK. Beautiful. Did, did you come through Deb's meetup group? Uh, my, my friend sent me a link. Oh, that's a, that's a good sign. <laughs> no, so I, I missed the beginning beginning because I'm, I'm actually, I've just taken my mother-in-law shopping. So I'm just thought I'd join whilst I'm waiting. Very good. Well, and do you mind mentioning who was your friend who referred you? Vanita. Her name is Vanita. She's in the Emirates. Emirates. Vanita. I also don't know her. Well, that's good. Anyways. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, Deb, how do you say we kick it started? Yeah. All right. Let's go. All right. So, thank you, everybody, for joining today's session with um, one and only Deb and my humble self, Matteo. So, Today, we're gonna talk uh, as a follow-up of series, Progress versus Perfection on getting unstuck. So you don't see the title here, but basically today it's about how to make progress, how to get, well, even, I guess, the foundation part, how to get unstuck from where you are to move where you wanna be. So what we're gonna talk today, uh, basically, is going to be ask a little tool that I want to give you along the way. Uh, then we're gonna do very nice exercise with Deb, and then we're gonna talk about the next webinars and some potential uh, different other resources that you could find. So little story, um, maybe I will give the floor to Deb a little bit about getting unstuck, and then I just say a few words where I where it could be relevant for me. Deb, do you want to give a couple sentences how, you know, where you were in your journey and how you got unstuck maybe in some area of your life? Sure. Uh, so hello, everybody. Yes, I definitely spent a lot of years stuck and I actually didn't know that I was stuck because I know now that if we do something long enough, it becomes normal and we don't know any different. And it was only when I ended up getting um, physically sick um, but I had to start taking a look at things and that's when I discovered how I had been stuck not only in, you know, bad food habits, um, I was a carb and sugar queen, um, but also in my inability to have healthy boundaries in my relationships. Um, I was a big people pleaser um, and um, even in my work, my self-esteem was attached to my performance and my accolades and my job performance reviews. Um, which fortunately were good, so it kind of sustained me. But then um, I also came to know that when I was doing that, I was handing all my power over to other people. Um, and so I knew that I needed to start figuring out how to feel good about me um, and how to treat myself well without any external influences. Um, and so I was super stuck, um, but it was through that realization and then having the um, ability to ask for help uh, and get the help that I needed uh, to get my own coach um, and to begin the process of getting unstuck. And I can say that life is much more fun on this side. It's much lighter. My anxiety is not anywhere where it used to be. It used to fuel everything I did. Um, and now it doesn't. Um, so if you're thinking about doing some work, I would highly encourage you to do it because it's absolutely worth it. How's that? Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so a couple of things, to, a couple of words to me. I think I would resonate definitely with that side with getting, getting stuck in terms of fear and anxiety. I definitely still have my moments and I always try to overcome fear and anxiety with positivity and always shining my light and kind of never acknowledging 
the real why this stuff is there why the anxiety where does it come from and i i just kind of i don't know why but i always learned okay you know when i'm positive when you know everything is bright affirmation everything is good you know it will go away but it somehow didn't go away and after years and years of kind of trying to figure out reading books i bumped into the book from tara brach um i think drop was it dropping ashes on a buddha um Anyways, she basically said you got to invite anxiety uh, or fear for a tea. And I think it comes from a Buddhist saying, some type of, I don't remember exactly now, but this, it was a mind opening thing for me because many areas in my life were exactly operated on this level where I was like, okay, I got to overcome it. And then eventually when I said, okay, well, maybe it's like passing clouds. Maybe I just let it go and I just welcome it and then it will go away. And it really happened. So now, like Deb said, I, I feel like I crossed the river, uh, which seemed so bright and through power of perspective and awareness, I gained the strength to really deal with it and say, okay, it gives me strength and power and I can still be, you know, experience fear, adrenaline. And it's actually good because it gives you the momentum that you need, but you need to, it's like a fire that you always need to mitigate and, you know, build fences around. So that's a little story to us. And then, you know, your story. I just want to hear in a couple of words because I think that's very important. Uh, the reason why we try to make it as interactive with depth as possible, as possible, it's because when you, like the picture here on the left, where you see the you know, man or somebody actually being stuck to the concrete or having something, and we all have experienced this feeling where you have the gum, you know, uh, stuck to your shoelace and then you try to kind of pull it off so in even the cars here you see somebody passing by they have a bike they decided okay you know i gonna today i gonna go with a bike and you see the bikes coming in between but there you see the cars actually standing somewhere all the way to the back and sometimes that's equivalent in life for all of us right we just are stuck at some place whether that's in the traffic whether that's in our personal relationship whether that's in our finances or in our you know something terrible happened and we need to find ways forward so i don't want to force anybody to share we shared now with Deb, and because we are such a small group you definitely uh, can be certain that this is just you know part of the group but if you feel you want to share a little story where you are at and where you feel like you know there is an area in your life where you feel stuck I'm, I'm sure it will help you for the further exercise so anybody wants to volunteer i mean i can talk about how i've been feeling recently and i feel that i am stuck at the moment and i'm not getting out um but my anxiety relates to where i'm at with work and the pressures um from work um and i keep telling myself it is a passing cloud but at the moment it's sort of coming in waves um, and it hasn't subsided yet. So I, I'm hoping to equip myself with something that would assist me dealing with it. Um, it's just a bit frustrating that I think anxiety comes from control or lack of control and being an overly, uh, sort of being overly critical of yourself. Um, but with me in terms of control, it's to do with the workload from my employer. Um, they recognize that they're giving me too much, but they're still saying, oh, it's okay. So I've come to a stage now this week where I've said, right, enough's enough. I'm not taking on anymore. So I'm hoping that will be a way of me starting to gain control and perhaps um, alleviate some of the anxiety that I'm feeling, but it's just a bit too soon to tell at the moment. So mm. yeah, that's, that's my story. <laughs> Thank you, Skandi. That's very nice of you sharing and definitely fits in today's theme and there is no right or wrong and i think this is a definitely good way to await the further discussion because i'm sure deb can add to this from her corporate life i'm 100 percent sure yeah, probably even yadvika yadvika you want to say a couple words yeah i can relate very much so to what skandi said about workplace challenges so on top of my personal uh, challenges that uh, our ongoing process right now i turned into a situation at work that is unbelievably hard uh, and if i need to relate to the stuckness a concept uh, it's more thrown upon me i want to kind of like go through the situation solve it but i'm uh, 
not everything is within my control and i just needed to accept that i've done everything that is within me uh, to progress the situation but there are some circumstances i cannot uh, control or people that are responsible in the situation that i just need to kind of step away and let the process unfold on its own and that has been very challenging even though i know reasonably that you cannot control everything it's just like why am i in this situation and kind of working through this has been really really hard on me so there hasn't been a day without waking up in anxiety in anxiety uh, for a long time so i can i can relate mm -hmm. to, to to that concept of workplace kind of question mark what is happening and we know it's not right but uh, it's still happening <laughs> kind of thing hmm. no, this is powerful i mean for everybody here because i think we all came through this that probably can really uh, talk about that i think i definitely can relate it's yeah it's really cool thanks for sharing and we got it's uh, i'm sure i think through us speaking it out loud something opens up um, i've experienced it many times so yeah this is a good start all right so let us proceed um let me switch to the next slide. So today it's about having a little tool and I call it ask. So it's time to ask. It's time for us to really question the situation. And I think this is exactly the moment you guys did. You pondered and you kind of analyzed the situation. And funny enough, both of you answered the question pretty much if you know what's happening. And this is the first thing to know, you know, hey, what's happening? Um, and where am I? And oftentimes what I have seen, we are in this situation, like this little man on the top, where we just keep plowing. I know myself far too good for this. And I mentioned it during the little session that I had one time with Dev. Very independent. I want to do stuff on my own. You know, I know Scandi mentioned being in control. This is exactly it. We love we live in this Western society and I've, I've spent more than a decade in the Netherlands. I live now in Germany, which is all about control. Uh, sometime in Spain where I'm thinking actually now relocating as well, <laughs> but it's really about having this energy um, and this part where we really actually don't ask for help. We feel like it's, we got to do it on our own. You know, other people are going to judge us. Uh, or whatsoever, maybe we are powerful on our own. But the good thing is, and this is what I want you to take away, the A for ask is it's okay to ask for help. It's totally fine to share everything you go through. You don't have to overshare if you don't feel like it, but I'm sure there is. Hello, Mohammed. I think your internet probably is unstable. I just put you on mute for a second and then we're going to have a discussion later, if you don't mind. So let's us continue with the, um, with the notion of being able to ask for help. I think it's very important to make sure that we do that. The second part of this equation, the S is for say, and this is why I said, speak it out loud. Sometimes it's just so much in our head and I've seen it so many times, whether that's at work, whether that's with, you know, other projects that I have going on, you always think about, you know, that what is here, it's true. But when you speak it out loud, sometimes you feel it's completely different. And oftentimes we are really here in this corner. We silently suffer inside. We just feel, I, you know, this and that. and. I don't know the answer for this. And sometimes it's good, but oftentimes, you know, we need to, and for everybody works something else. I know I have a friend and when he feels bad, he's like, a, he's like this automat. You put a coin in and it starts spitting out that it's songs and he just speaks and speaks. And suddenly in half an hour, he's like, thanks. And he goes away, you know, <laughs> and just shares how he feels. And it's all that crap. Or, you know, we know it from a family when people complain and then, and, and then eventually they're like, yeah, thank you for your time. I'm like, yeah, well, sure. <laughs> but, you know, in the end of the day, 
it's about making sure I, you know, I need help. I need uh, to find a breakthrough. I want to change. And in the end of the day, it's really about transformation. And I know these are big words and a lot of this, but this, you both mentioned the Advika uh, and uh, just drop the name Skandi. It, it can be scary about making a change. But when we do that, we actually slowly enter this realm of progress, not perfection. And we start getting into the breakthrough. So say, don't remember that as for say. And lastly, one thing that we also should realize, and sometimes, you know, we know it, uh, we have to eliminate the fear of being afraid that we're going to burden someone when we say that. And this is why such, you know, intimate session like we have today can be very powerful because you can be, you can open up. Nobody's going to judge you. That's the first thing that you can know from me, from that. We went through a lot of stuff ourselves and that's why we share this stuff because we know, K for no, that when you do that, this is exactly what happens. Somebody else says, hey, you're welcome. You know, it's totally fine. Uh, what's going on? And we need to realize this, that we as a human beings, there are 7 billion people on the planet. There's 7 billion people that went through probably a lot of similar stuff. And we have to get into the, you know, f trusting our gut on that when we share it, that what we know it's true and oftentimes we know that that when we speak it out loud when we share it then we build this type of you know connection with other people and honestly just for for the couple of minutes that you shared your story i have really respect for both of you because that takes guts i know myself sharing you know stuff that i went through family that passed away or breakups or disappointments promotions not being given etc etc and from there, you build a fellowship, you build actually a tribe of people that actually say, you know what, I cheer for you because I know I went through this and you built this great integrated connection. And I think this is very powerful. So remember, you know, A, S and K, ask, because you know, when, when you ask every time you're in a situation, when you're struggling, when you, when you don't know what to do, this is where you need to take a step back and it helps. So let us dive. Uh, well, by then, before we do that, are there any questions actually? Anything that you would like to know or anything that was unclear? I think no, but we will have possibility as well in the end to have a little discussion around this. So I'll give the floor now to Depp just to have a little interactive session and then we will dive into a little deeper discussion. I thought your, all of your explanations were very clear. Um, Thank you. <laughs> and I've never heard asked before, so I think that's really good. Um, so yeah, if you have a pen and paper, I'm just going to walk you through. Uh, so I'm an integrated wellness coach. And so my job as a coach is to ask, you know, questions that help you find out where you're at and what you're doing and where you need to be and what you need to do to get there. Um, and so it's more powerful when people are able to make the discoveries themselves versus somebody telling them. So coaching is sometimes a bit of both, um, but in this uh, exercise, I want to take you guys through a few questions that should help you start to be able to get unstuck um, and figure out, and then I'm going to ask you to commit to one action that you're going to take. Uh, because at the end of the day, we only have control over our own selves. We have no control over uh, what anybody else does. So control seems to be kind of a buzzword today. So here's the first question. If you have a pen and paper, and then we're going to ask, ask you guys to share. Um, so what I know is absolutely true, because I was, you know, stubborn as all get up, is that what we resist persists. So anytime we get that feeling of resistance, and I still get it, I know now that there's something that I am, uh, if I don't do something about it, it's going to continue to persist. So this is the first question I want you to take a minute to write your answers to. So what is one thing that you have been con continually resisting, trying to do, face, um, so Scandi, something at work, maybe it's speaking up about work, um, which it sounds like you've been able to do. Um, so what is one thing that you've continually resisted doing, trying, or facing? 
Just take a minute to write your answers down. Can I just have a quick question? I resisted to talk about my work situation for some time, but recently I've, I've decided to stand up for myself. Does it qualify or should I look for something else uh, that I'm resisting currently? Do you feel like you've gotten the outcome you wanted from doing that? The outcome is, I think, still in the works, but at least I set the motion into something happening, hopefully, fingers crossed. Um, so I cannot fully answer yet because right. it's unfolding, but at least like I dropped the, a little rock in a pond, so it's moving. Right, so is there a next level to that? So you've done the first part, is there, if it's not resolved, then there's more that needs to be done. So can you take it to the next step of you doing that? Now what's the next thing that you um, yeah. might be apprehensive to? Is it to go back? Like if you haven't heard from them, is it to go back and follow up? Um, is it to figure out the actual amount that you're willing to do or accept? So there's always something more. So take it to the next level. And um, Scandi, you had said that you've also mentioned something to your employer. So could be the same thing for you too. What's the next step for you? Because maybe your employer just blows you off and doesn't say anything. Says, yeah, 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 you're right. And then that's the end of it. I definitely have had that happen to me. Um, so then it's even harder, I found the second time to have to go back again and take up even more space um, to do it. So I found having to do it again because I wasn't being heard or taken seriously from my first ask. I found going back the second time even harder. So um, if that resonates with you, um, then that would be sort of what your one thing could be. Actually, uh, I, I completely agree with you. And I think I uh, embarked on this point where um, I need to let the other side, uh, like there's, also, I think a power in letting others act. Like, so I done to a point all I could do now. And instead of putting more pressure, I kind of need to be more patient and let the process unfold. And I think this is super hard for me because I'm very direct person and I'm like, let's, we can fix it. So let's do it. And for me, just to accept that things take time uh, and not being able to do anything active. Uh, that's, I know it sounds like it's not a next step because there's no action in it, but actually I found that letting, like, so the ball is on the court of this other parties that I'm dealing with and I just need to wait. Sometimes re-asking too often, I found also not working in our favor as much as frustration I have for this process. So, yeah, so maybe that is my next, to be just uh, content you're, with yourself. Yeah, you're resisting it. So it absolutely is that because just so you know, not doing anything is doing something. Okay. So not taking action is an action, making a conscious choice to say, I need to let this go. I can't wow. fix it. I can't control it. I can't manipulate it. I can't manage it. I can't analyze it. I need to sit and let it go. And that's probably one of the hardest things to do. Yeah. So thank you. It's a great insight. You made my day. <laughs> Not doing anything is doing something. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. So maybe uh, let's take a couple, I don't know, a minute or so to answer. What do you think, Deb? Yeah, so um, Scandi, do you have anything you want to share? Have you figured out what your one thing is? It's similar to um, Judge Wiegers uh, that um, I was resisting raising the issue, uh, but now that I've raised it, I did have to go back and raise it again a second time. Um, but for me, inaction for my situation isn't good enough. I need to be persistent with it, I think. Um, 
because if there isn't any action, I, we, I revert back to the same situation that I was in where more work is being sent my way. And then if I don't say anything, then there's repercussions for that not being completed. So um, in terms of escalation, I guess it's taken it to somebody a bit more senior. I mean, I have escalated it this week because I've gone to my GP and I've said, look, they need to recognize that it's affecting my mental health. So that's been another step for me, but maybe taking it to somebody that's a bit more senior than who I'm presenting it to is another step that I need to take. Yeah. Is there the potential of when you're being given this work to say no? Um, th there is. We've got almost like a point system. So we're all allocated, say, 100 points in terms of work. Um, I've always worked at over 100. Um, I mean, anywhere from 110 to 187. So we're over what they're saying that we can manage, but it still falls on deaf ears when I'm resistant. And the thing is, um, there's strength in numbers, but at the moment, it's just me that's making noise. So I seem like, you know, I, I'm being singled out and I'm almost like the troublemaker. But um, when I've asked management to speak to other members of the team, they have recognised that it's something that's across the board and everybody feels the same way as me, but it's just me at the moment that's speaking out. Yeah. So I would encourage you. Sandy, you need to make more noise. Like there's somebody in here, the tail that needs to be removed. Yeah, I, I am making um more noise. I am sort of raising the, the issue, but. Um, uh, yeah, sorry. I, I just, um, I, there was somebody, there's somebody that's um, Zoom, um, what do you call it? Zoom bombing us. Um, those weird voices yeah. that are coming in. So, um, but yeah, so yeah. what I want to say to you is that if you are able to, because it's hard to be, you know, the solo person going out uh, and doing this, but I want to encourage you to change your mindset and see yourself as a champion. So if you've got the courage and the knowledge um, and your other colleagues don't, then I would encourage you to see yourself as a champion and a leader rather than a pain in the ass. I think you're right. I think that's the way I view it. I view it as a troublemaker and I'm always saying I'm sorry for being the troublemaker. I'm sorry for the one for being the that's one right. that's raising these issues. So yeah, perhaps you're right. Maybe I do need to see it as somebody as like an ambassador almost. Exactly. Um, so yeah, you're a trailblazer. You're literally for everybody going to be able to change the circumstances. Yeah, I hope lynch, so. lynch, bin, lynch bin. Yeah, hundred percent. Somebody has to raise their hand. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I, I see empty us in a room and I'm sure that I know from the talks we had in the past. As well, she's, hey, nice to see you. I know you Hi. went through a similar stuff as well. So nothing oh, new. <laughs> I've got, um, I've got a month and a half off now for summer holidays. Oh, God, awesome. my, my problem is now I can't get back to the UK and see my family. <laughs> oh, oh no. That's the only issue I've got. Uh, what is one thing that you have continually resisted doing trying to uh, for me it's actually exercising and losing weight and eating healthy <laughs> so it doesn't seem as serious as what they're going through but I think that's what I've been doing it was my birthday last week so I was eating like a pig and I've put off exercising for so long now and now that I've got a break I'm like I have to start I have to start today so I don't know if that's off topic, but I'm just answering the question that I just seen. Yeah, no, that's absolutely because everybody has a different take. It just happens that Scandi and Jodrika's thing is work today, uh, which is interesting because one of my coaching clients is going through exactly the same thing, needing to speak up. Um, but yeah, it can be anything in your life. So you're hundred um, percent. I would just want to um, encourage you to be a little kinder to yourself. Um, and just know that there's a reason why your body is needing to do that food thing. There's something else going on. Um, there's some kind of stress or anxiety or feelings not good enough or something's underneath that. So just know that your body's doing what it's trying to do to manage through the situation. So instead of, you know, saying you're eating like a pig, say, you know, what is my body trying to tell me? <laughs> That's true. I always describe it as eating as a pig. Um, yeah. I so think it's the fact yourself. That, yeah, I think so. I think it's the fact that I've worked so hard this year. I'm exhausted now. I just need a break. 
I just want to eat what I want, do what I want, and just relax and do nothing even. So, yeah. Right. But here's the thing. So, you know, you are in the Zoom room with an integrated wellness coach. <laughs> Lucky <laughs> you. <laughs> so what I want to say to you is that um, your mindset is that doing that is a treat. It's a good thing. It's not a good thing. You're hurting yourself. When we don't make healthy choices, and, I, and again, I eat pizza, I eat ice cream on occasion, but it's not my staple. So if you can start trying to view yourself in a different perspective of instead of those things being a treat or I've done all this, I deserve it. Yeah, you mm -hmm. deserve to be good to yourself. So be good to yourself by giving your body nourishing food. And there's amazing, good, healthy food out there that's incredible. Oh, my weight shot up. I think that's yeah. the warning sign now. I got weighed um, at the GPs yesterday and I was like, oh my God, I've put on three kg and I thought, this is not right. <laughs> I need yeah. to stop before it gets worse. <laughs> right. But just know that it's underneath that. So you have to look past the food. The food is a symptom. The food is a symptom. You need to look past that. What is going on underneath? What's the story that you've got going on that you're telling yourself that you deserve to be doing that? Could be a number of things. I am stressed at the moment because I was trying to find flights to fly back, but there's so many restrictions that stressed me out. Um, I wouldn't say that I, um, I love my job. I'd say I'm just doing it because it's paying the bills and giving me you know, a financial freedom is pay, it's giving me money so I can do what I want. But I wouldn't say I love the job. It, it exhausts me. I work flat out. I'm literally managing the whole school by myself, um, which isn't the case in other schools. Usually I have like a couple of people in my department, but I'm like a one person department at the moment. So that's tough. Um, I even went in a couple of days ago um to um, on my days off this was when my holiday started i went in for a couple more days just to finish off reports um and um documents for next year so everything's ready in place so yeah i don't know i'd say it's only that that's bothering me and the fact that i'm i know that i may not be able to visit family this year I won't be able to get back because there's so many restrictions and then now I read I read an article that was saying if even if you're vaccinated twice it has to be NHS vaccination which I got mine done here in UAE so I'm yeah. a bit worried now yeah so yeah yeah so there so I encourage you to just do a deeper dive we have a few more questions so hopefully this process will help you kind of start uncovering that um, and I have a couple of ideas for you so uh, let's move on to our next question. So the second part of this is because, you know, we're human beings in layers. So what is it that you're believing about this one thing that has you resisting it? So, you know, um, Scandi's thing about, you know, being bad or being the one, the troublemaker, um, that's something that you're believing around so that's got you kind of resisting it. So what is the thing that you're believing about this? Is that for me or for anyone in general? It's for all of you. Yeah, it's for everybody. So just take a minute. Uh, so I'm going to take you through, I think, five or six questions here. So they're for everybody to take a couple of minutes to think about your situation mm -hmm. and what your one thing is that you've selected that you um, know that you're resisting and take that one thing through this process. Deborah, I'm struggling with this question. Can you give some example, uh, maybe? Oh. Um, so... Well, one of the things we just talked about was um, that, you know, I've worked hard, I do all these things, and so I deserve to be able to eat all these things that I want, even though it's hurting me. So you're believing that you deserve that. Um, in your case of work, so Mike, I'll talk about myself. When I needed to speak up at work, I was afraid that if I um, spoke up that they wouldn't like me, I would get tarnished. Uh, it would be reflected in my performance reviews that nobody would back me up if I actually said something. 
So all of those limiting beliefs kind of stopped me for a while from actually doing it um, because I was putting all my power out in other people instead of looking at what truly belonged to me. So in your situation, you know, what is the thing that you're believing the story that you think might happen or that you're worried about or afraid of if you do that one thing? Thank you. So I think what we can do is we'll go through the questions and then at the end we can talk about it. Um, and then, um, cause they'll help you kind of take yourself through the process. Okay, so let's move on to the next question. So again, you're taking that one thing you're resisting and you're bringing it through each of these questions. So as you continue to resist whatever it is, what is it costing you? So what is it costing you in your self-esteem and your self-belief? What is it costing you with your health? What is it costing you in your career? And what is it costing you in your happiness? Just give me a wave or a thumbs up when you're ready to go to the next one. Um, and if you write these questions down, these are questions that you can take and apply to any situation in your life. Are you good? Okay. Okay. So let's move on to the next one. Thank you, Mateo. <laughs> uh, okay. So how long have you been resisting this one thing? So how long have you been wanting to do it or afraid to do it? Or how long has that been going on? A week, a month, years? If it's your career, is there a pattern of jobs that you've landed that continually have this situation happen? And you can just write down a number. Okay, and let's move to the next question. So this is now, I'm going to ask you guys to share what you've uncovered in those questions and kind of walk us through the whole process of what you found for the thing that you resist. Uh, and then we're going to come together and um, commit to each other an action that we're going to each take. Um, and integrative wellness is all about tiny baby steps. So it doesn't have to be a huge action. Um, it can be a small action. So who wants to start? Should I start? Yes, please. Because <laughs> <laughs> no one else volunteered. That's okay. okay. Um, Where so you go? The one action, just start on this slide. No, on the question before. Okay. So, so Mateo, sorry, yeah. Mateo, do you want to go back and then we'll just kind of take you through each one with your thing? Okay, it was number, how long? Can so, I number two was about, yeah, here we go. So, what, what are you believing 
briefly what is what is it that you're believing i believe i deserve a break i deserve like relaxation now and to eat what i want and do what i want because i've worked so hard and just to take a step back and not not to be so um difficult or hard on myself and the question for number three so that's okay a thing. good number three self-esteem i'd say my self-esteem is lowered like nothing fits me anymore yeah <laughs> i'll be honest nothing fits um health wise i've gained weight and i get um tired a lot quicker than what i used to before a career i wouldn't say it's affected my career because i'm on holiday now and you know i'm, I'm, I'm a work, I'm, I'm a workaholic anyway so any tasks that need to be done for work i would do them and not do my exercise i'd actually prioritize my work before my self which is wrong um happiness i'm not as healthy as i used to be i'm not happy because i'm not as healthy as i used to be and all the hard work that i worked on before before this month that's gone by i've kind of it's kind of gone to waste now because i'm back to square one and i'm having to work again to lose the weight to to feel good to feel more energetic so how long has it been going on for number four um about a month i'd say and um one action i would say make healthier choices and try and do a bit of exercise every day even if it's not much just try and do a bit of movement each day because that's how i started initially this time last year that's how i started and i i lost a lot of weight yeah so you so, uh, you know what to do you just gotta get so if you're waiting for motivation it's not yeah. coming Motivation yeah. is not coming. You have to take action in order to wake up motivation. Everybody thinks it's yeah. the other way around. It's not. In order for motivation to arrive, you have to start doing. Yep. I so, agree. okay. So we're going to do this. So what is, what is like your favorite go-to food or treat that you are indulging in? What is my fate at the minute? I'm eating a lot of chocolate, a lot of cream cake. Because it was my birthday, I kind of spiraled down from then. <laughs> right, right. So you know that you're being unkind to yourself eating those things because they're not great for your body. So you're celebrating mm -hmm. your birthday. So what's one thing you can replace one of those with? That I, think I'm, I think I'm celebrating my birthday every day. For the yeah. But really what I'm, I'm saying to you is you're actually not celebrating, you're hurting yourself, right? You're eating things that are not good for you. So what is one thing that you can replace that is better for you that you'll, every time you I, want to have a chocolate, you choose at least every other time something different and better for you? Probably a piece of fruit or snack on some nuts or have a smoothie. Yeah. Uh, I guess that would be the sensible choice. But then I have to have a piece of chocolate every day. So what I'm thinking is to limit myself to one little piece. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So here's the thing. I, what I would suggest to you when people have um, sugar cravings, because sugar is really an addiction, um, mm -hmm. is what I encourage people to do is if you like anything like figs or dates, um, yeah. to eat one of them instead because they have an incredible amount of sugar, so they will whack out your sugar craving, but they also oh, okay. are full of vitamins and minerals and nutrients and antioxidants, and they're incredibly good for you. So okay. if instead of that chocolate, have a date or a fig um, and start that way. Okay. Hmm? Thanks. <laughs> Let's remember, to babies. Pass. It, that's okay. You're just doing it in baby steps. So just every other chocolate craving, every third chocolate craving, like whatever you can start off doing, start yeah. trying to do it. So are you willing to commit today to going out and buying yourself some figs or dates? Or whatever I have dates. Like? I, have okay. some, I have some in my cupboard, actually. Very good. I have some, yeah. So will you commit to the next time you're craving hints today? 
that you'll mm -hmm. try having a fig. And if you're really having a hard time, having a fig with a small piece of cheese is really amazing because it's protein and sugar together. And that will definitely okay. not take the craving out. Okay. Okay. I'll give it a go. Yeah. So you're on your way. Yep. <laughs> Just like that. You're on your way. Uh, okay. Excellent. Um, and you showed up here today. So good job. Uh, so who else wants to go? I can go. Okay. Uh, so what are you believing? So this is like a double-edged sword for me because uh, I'm uh, not really believing but what I'm scared of is the worst case scenario. Uh, that might come out of a situation I am in. So this is something that I'm thinking about. In general, I'm very analytical, so I build different scenarios and among yeah. the scenarios is best case and also worst, but the worst is the worst, so that's what's occupying my mind. Uh, but I also think that when I'm in this situation, I feel I am still very valuable, like I uh, don't allow the situation to doubt my self-worth, uh, my skills, uh, my abilities, like what I, what I am cut out for the career I've chosen for myself. So that's like positive and negative in the same brain. I don't know how it's possible, but that's my answer. So okay. I feel, I want to believe I'm, I'm, I'm super and I don't understand why this situation is happening. Maybe it's to it doesn't uh, seem so humble, but that's what I. It's I, happening because there's something for you to learn. Okay, I actually figured out already some learning points from that situation, but uh, so I'm trying to believe. Maybe that's the even better answer. That this is happening for, uh, even though it's painful, it's happening for something. It's something beautiful is going to come out of it. Yeah. And we only learn from pain. Pain is the only thing that will make us pay attention. So that means you are learning. And no matter what situation you're in, there's always something for us to learn. That's just the way it is. So if you start embracing everything that comes up as a lesson that is intended to propel you forward in your life, it starts to shift us from being a victim of something to recognize, okay, what do I need to learn? What do I, how do I learn this? Um, because I know what is true is that if we don't learn the lesson that time, it'll come up again and again and again and again until we learn it. So I actually like was, go ahead. Yeah. Go yeah, ahead. I actually now, yeah, maybe we can go through the question. So I will. Yeah, so next one. So. Uh, so self-esteem, yeah, I touched upon it. So my belief uh, about myself, abilities, and my future is kind of the situation makes me doubt it, even though I don't want to go into the spiral, but uh, the doubt is there. Uh, about my health, anxiety is uh, through the roof. Uh, career, uncertainty, more uncertainty. I try to clarify it from my end, but the external environment doesn't want to cooperate at the time now. Uh, I'm in Norway, so July is like the whole country shuts down for holidays. So timing-wise, it's been very tricky. And happiness, uh, I would say because of the root cause of something that is very important for me, so I relocated to Norway to pursue my PhD, uh, is now the cause of the situation. So if I'm not able to address this root cause, in my opinion, how am I able to rest, rest and relax? take holidays for that matter. So for me, that, that is the challenge, like something underneath is not addressed. How may I on the surface be okay? <laughs> so this is what I'm trying to do now to kind of uh, detach myself from something that is like core of my, I don't know, I don't want to say existence, but it's very important to me. And then it took me one week more or less to take a like standing up for myself now now in this situation or even less but if i ever reflect and connect the dots on the way um that brought me into this situation it probably is over a year or close to two years between one year and two but i kind of 
could have seen red flags, but I only see them now because I know more. At the time, I wouldn't take any action. So this pattern of standing up for myself actually only came into like reality this past month or so. I wouldn't act differently in the past, but I know now kind of where things might go wrong. And that's another learning I got out of it, uh, hopefully. Right. Um, so there's just a couple of things I, what I do as a coach is I challenge your thinking. So what I want to say to you is you use the words that you um, analyze, you're analytical. I'm going to reframe that for you and you're not going to like it, but I'm going to say it anyways. <laughs> it's obsessive thinking. You're not analyzing, you're obsessive. Mm. Um, and so I just want you to hear that so that you're not making it a good thing because analytical, because I can tell you are, makes you feel like you're doing something good. You're not doing something good. When your brain is spinning out and going down the pipe, it is not good for you. It increases your heart rate, increases your blood pressure, increases your anxiety. Uh, if you're somebody that turns to food, you'll start turning to food. So I want you to now, every time you do that, start calling it what it is. It's being obsessive thinking. And oh, then tough. take the actions to change it. Yeah, it's tough to hear, but uh, yeah. I accept this version of truth. Because <laughs> I, what I want to do is disrupt that belief that you've got going on, that it's a good thing you're doing. It's not a good thing. So disrupting it is changing how you look at it. I, I think you are on a good point about this to name a thing that is it causing me okay is analyzing it more causing like serving me like it's not like i've done all i could at the time so just don't like it's a pattern of self-punishment quote unquote yeah i, I i've i've struggled I've, i think i i struggle with this so yeah. and that depletes your self-esteem your health if it's something to do with work, it'll diminish your performance at work. Um, and you can't be happy when that's going on. And it can be. And you can't be happy when all that's going on. Yeah. Right? Uh, and I can say all that to you because I was an obsessive thinker. I could take like the smallest thing that upset me and spin it. And spin it and spin it and spin it and spin it. And spin it, and spin it. So I get it. That's why I can see it. Um, so we want to learn to stop. So I call it when you're um, standing there. Do you know what a manhole is? In Toronto, we have like those sewers on the ground. So what I say is you have a choice. There's a moment where you have a choice that you either going to go down that manhole spinning out or you can jump both your legs on the outside of it and say, nope, I'm not going there um and redirect your thinking and it takes a lot of work but it's literally you know go do the dishes and start saying i'm washing the dishes go do the laundry i'm washing my clothes and literally bring yourself back in the moment by out loud saying what you're doing to stop the brain from going down that old road so it's like being aware and cautious uh, conscious about your choice like i can so say no like i actually con should control my thoughts not to think obsessively right. You know, in right. a moment. Right. But it takes a lot of practice. Yeah, it's like a habit, uh, and our yes. habit stuff. Yeah. yeah, it's all from fear. That's why we do that. We try to fix, save in our brains, right? It's all based on fear. Um, and so, and when we do that, it only fuels anxiety. So the fear fuels the anxiety and it stirs up the thinking and it just becomes this vicious circle. Yeah. So, what I'm suggesting to you and all of you guys is that stop it. So we have a saying here, because I deal with some people that um, come from families of alcoholism. So what we say to the families of alcoholics is, the alcoholic drinks, you think. So we say, don't take the first thing. So the alcoholic is, don't take the first drink, and everybody else is, don't take the first thing. The second you see it, and you know the feeling, and you know that this is something you're going to just blow out, stop yourself. And like I said, bring yourself back into the moment and literally start talking about what you're doing. Washing dishes is an amazing way to do it because you can really get in there and scrub. <laughs> so, um, but it just takes practice. Yeah, I wrote uh, for the answer for number five with big capital letters, let go. And even writing this five letters was so hard. Like, 
how can I let go if right but so I've just given you how to let go so you know that's what we do we want to go awareness action what I'm saying is you want to go awareness acceptance action and it's you know you need to let go but the process now of what you're going to do is bring yourself back into the moment and start talking about exactly what you're doing in that moment so that those um, obsessive thoughts can't come in okay awareness acceptance action thank you yeah how are we for time Michaela? um i think if we schedule one and a half hour last time because we were a little bit yeah. over time we have half an hour left or at least for some um i think we have scandi left yeah so we can we can go through there uh through with scandi through it if she's okay with it yeah yeah sure have, it, it, Michaela, do you have anything you want to add with all your wisdom oh so much i mean i'm I, i think well yes and no i i feel like you guys answered it everything and i i could add my story i definitely was sometimes am on that route where i'm ruminating in my head but i kind of can add to that that i really believe in everything that you said adapt with controlling what goes in your mind and that's why I consider myself a very positive person. And one of the reasons is because I trained myself and I was a depressed kid. I was, you know, suicidal. I went through, you know, people in my family that I lost, all these things, uh, bullying and, then, you know, a lot of other stuff that we all went through or in some parts. And you need to come on the other side. And I believe self-control, working on yourself. And I always say, you know, get familiar with yourself, how you feel, how you tick, how you react to different situations. And that's what Depp said, it takes months, sometimes years to figure out. But once you go on this self-discovery journey, which you guys are doing right now, um, I think this is amazing. And for me, it's humbling just hearing from you guys, you know, coming to the conclusion of, hey, this is what I gonna do, whether that's MTS, you know, doing your next step in terms of, you know, t getting healthier, Uh, eating more fix uh, or fix instead of you know chocolate and it's a lot of things that we all go through so I only can encourage you because I know I went through this route myself in different situations and I, I answered some of those questions as well myself and I feel as well just this you know big stone being lift off from you know myself but also just because hearing you and really so I want to give you a really big applause for sharing this and thank you as well Deb for taking people through this because I think this is amazing this is just what I really believe and that's basically you need somebody to or you need yourself you have the answers this is what I said from the start the answers are there but you need somebody to guide you on that journey and I'm fortunate enough to have you know to know somebody like Deb that has this experience and that went through this journey herself and like yourself so really applause for all of you And let's go to Scandi. Oh, hello. If you, thank you for refreshing me with the questions. As mentioned, I was taking my mother-in-law shopping, so I'm sort of dipping in and out. Um, um, so what am I believing about the one thing that's resisting it? Um, that I think the main thing that causes me to resist it is the fact that I feel powerless in the situation. Um, and as mentioned before, the control isn't with me. Well, not so much as much as the powers that be in the organization. So I, I'm trying to relinquish power um, from them by putting my foot down and making a stand. Um, so I think that answers that one. Um, I think it's very costly in terms of resistance i think it affects me on all those levels in terms of self-esteem if i compare myself to um my counterparts in the organization then it, it makes me feel as though i'm not fulfilling my job role to the same degree because i'm the one that's saying enough's enough um but what i'm realizing as time's gone on is that the quality of work that we produce is very different and i'm hearing that reflected back to me time and time again that my work's excellent yet 
they still want to keep giving me more work because I'm completing it. So my health inevitably takes a toll. Um, mentally, most definitely in terms of anxiety and sleepless nights and um, being critical of yourself and, and thinking, why is it only you that's going through this? Um, and obviously that always translates into physical ail ailments, um, headaches and, um, you know, lack of physical exercise because you sort of give that up to concentrate more on completing these tasks that have been thrown your way. Um, in terms of my career, it's my outlook's changed. So I've started looking for other employment because I don't feel valued, um, not in this role anyway. Um, so I, I don't know in terms of cost of a career I guess I, I've got a reputation for being somebody that's um, challenging maybe I don't know um, although I'm told that I'm not being challenging I, I still believe that that's what they think um, and it does cost you your happiness because you haven't got that work-life balance um, so you're constantly agitated you're constantly living on the edge with your anxiety and usually for me the kids get it in the neck um, and working late nights as well that impacts on the time that I spend with my family and with my partner so it sort of filters out into all aspects of your life I think um when you're unhappy about something okay um this one thing I've been resisting actively resisting I would say since January resisting it sort of intermittently um sporadically here and there good part of three years maybe Adam. Adam. sorry my son's decided to pipe up um so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i think he's feeling left out okay um what's one action that you're willing to commit to take a step forward for yourself i think i think i re i reached that stage at the beginning of this week when i actually sent an email um and said enough's enough you know i'm not prepared to do over what the agreed allocation is and the fact that people are going off sick is um an indicator as to where we're at um so i, th I think i've tried to shift ownership onto them um i don't know what other actions that i could take other than escalate the matter speak to the union and stand my ground um, I've already spoken to the GP to get me a supporting letter to say that um, I can fulfil my duties, but nothing else. Good. Good. So you're doing that. I'm just going to help you with the career part of what it's costing you in your career. Okay. Don't you think, you know, the job is what you do. It's not who you are. So don't you find that when you're going through this, it's consuming far too much of your life? Absolutely. So that would be what that would be costing you. So your career has bled, bled into all these other areas of your life because you're upset about what's happening. Yeah, and it's noticeable because my partner notices and, and yeah. the kids notice, but obviously they can't express it in the same way that my partner can. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that's the cost to you, right? Is that it's disrupting the other areas of your life. Yeah, it's a huge cost. It's a huge burden. Yeah, 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 good job. Um, and it sounds like you're taking action. So are you willing to commit to, you know, backing that up that if you don't get a response from them, that you're going to continue being a champion and a leader for your industry um, um, to, get, to get this to happen? Yeah, definitely. I think I've reached a stage in my life. I've worked there for 18 years. So I've reached a stage in my life where I'm just like, things need to change and they need to change now. Um, yeah. And I've, I've I've, I'm going to stand my ground with this matter um, and I've also contacted occupational health to discuss it with them um, but I've also see I, I'm becoming a bit of a troublemaker because I've raised other issues about race within the organization as well but I've got their backing with that one given that we've got Black Lives Matter um, but the issue with workloads is the one that I'm struggling with so most definitely I'm going to stand my ground because it's something that I believe passionately about I'm not prepared to sacrifice my health or my home life situation for work where they'll replace me if I drop dead with a, with a blink of an eye. Yeah, exactly. Good stuff. You guys all did great. Um, so just take your action that you've written, put a big square box around it um, and commit to yourself to do it. So 
Um, thank you everybody for sharing and being so open. And uh, like I said, this is an exercise. You can take anything that's troubling you through this process to help you get some clarity. Mm, so, amazing. I'm back to you, Matteo. Thank you, Deb. Thank you, everybody, for sharing. Amazing. So uh, let us uh, finish. I know there was one more question, and I think this was just a, um, yeah, just a, a pretty much what I wanted to give an answer to all of you. Um, you know, it's the reason or the fact that you're here today is also a confirmation that you already wants to step up. So I'm really happy that Deb went a little bit deeper than that. So well done to all of you. And I would encourage you as well to join us for the future events. We're going to talk about it in a, in a bit. But for me, even just as a spectator and sharing a couple of things is just mind opening. So amazing. So what I want to talk to you about just in a as a conclusion for the last minutes, it's to really amplify where you want to be in life. And now Deb said something that really resonated with me, the fact and the whole discussion about career with Scandi and all of you actually, all of us. Um, and I realized it in my own life and I've been writing now here alongside you with my goals being more clearer because I also tend to work ridiculous hours. And sometimes I'm like, well, you know, you really have to make clarity in terms of where you want to be. But what I want to encourage you guys, don't, settle don't settle just for you know obviously you have your one step it's amazing this is where it starts and from there you do another tiny step and from there another tiny step so from the little feek you maybe replace two pieces of chocolate or so three four five and then you eventually build on that or you talk you book a call with that and you know get extra perspective on replacing your closet uh, your um, you know closet of uh, bad food whatever that is or getting rid of sugar whatever the next step is for you make sure that you know that and you maybe lay it out for yourself but start with the one don't overwhelm yourself don't overwhelm yourself but know that you want to go and even further and this is why we do these sessions with Deb because i really believe you can go and you have this greatness in you like we all do and this is why we need to carry that torch of light, carry the torch of positivity. You need, or we all need that. We all need people with a similar mindset. We need people that maybe not exactly that are the same, but in some ways we can relate to them with our story or with the fact that uh, they struggle. And I think the struggle, that's what we can recognize all of us here. We all struggle in some parts and it's totally fine. It's totally okay to say, you know, I struggle, I need help here. We talked about it in the initials part of the presentation. Secondly, also, I want to encourage you guys to be true to yourself. And this is what I said, go and get lost, go and discover what you, who you are, what you want to do in life, where you want to be, because this is the necessary part in figuring out what makes you happy in life, whether that's, you know, the carrier you have, whether that's the partner you're hanging out with or the friends you surround yourself with, let this session serve for you to be an awakening call and wake up call to say, okay, you know, there are these areas in my life. I'm not going to overwhelm myself, but I know that in the next year, five, 10 years, I will change this and I will become this person. So have this bigger vision for yourself and for your life. And it starts with really being true to yourself, listening to what you want. Sometimes it is being, being selfish with what you want to do, where you want to be, with whom you want to hang out. And lastly, build your values. Um, I think some uh, Deb said it today, you have a choice and it's true. It's for anything you do in your life, you have a choice. And the one thing we should all take away from this discussion is not making a decision is a choice. And so figure where you want to be. What do you stand for? Is it, you know, is it for friendship? Is it love? Is it honesty, integrity? Build your own set of values because we all have those guiding principles. And this is where in Scandi's situation, or in, you know, uh, Jadvika or my situation or Deb situation where we overwork when, you know, we people please or where we, you know, overstep of our boundaries means that we haven't defined our boundaries, our values clearly. So let's, let us do that. So people with a similar mindset, be true to yourself and build the right values. And as a conclusion, 
the next, uh, you know, we, we are running this series, um, progress versus perfection. The next one is going to be the long game or playing the long game. It's going to be August 7th. So as Deb says it always brilliantly, we do it every second Saturday of the new month at, at, let me see that I don't butcher it 10 AM Eastern time, Toronto, beautiful time. And then 4 PM uh, CT or 3 PM UK time. And we probably going to be building this out as well in the future. What you can find or where you can find this recording at FitFun. This is where the beautiful collaboration comes in as well with Depp. I'm super happy with that. Um, we actually are on a mission to, you know, help people with these different parts of their life, the integrative wellness or holistic health, if you will. And you see Deb here, um, how she's laughing. That's from one of our podcasts. I definitely can encourage you for those that want to, you know, listen to that. I think we've done two or three already so far. If you want to dive more into depth world, definitely write her on Thrive Wellness Solutions Gmail, or, you know, you can hit me up. But, uh, you know, one thing that I would encourage you as well, please share it with your friends. I know that Scandi, I think, came from somebody because, you know, we are on a mission to really help people to, or help, you know, people can help themselves, but give them tools and different, you know, opening, um, you know, content that people can use to resonate and improve their lives. So you can find this as well uh, in the membership. We're going to be putting it there as well on the fit one. We, I call it the resilient Academy uh, depths content is probably going to come there as well in the future. We might, which I don't have the link right now that we have a Facebook group as well. Um, we can drop it for you later where, um, or Deb, if you have it, uh, can drop it in a comment where we have, uh, you know, sharing maybe some of the quotes and stuff. So if you want to be there, but otherwise I would encourage you to go into the membership. I can share it as well with you after, so you can get in touch. So I want to thank you very much for joining today, for joining this humble presentation, for being honest and open with yourself not so much with us because in the end of the day, you don't do it for us, you do it for yourself. And this is what I always remind myself, you know, you need to be selfish in some part and self-development, personal development is one thing that you have to prioritize above everything else. I know Scandi, it came through all of us here, but life, you know, healthy balance, healthy lifestyle, it's so important. So prioritize what is important, whether that's your health, whether that's the relationships and have, you know, join, join these groups, you know, meetings and surround yourself with people like that because it's brilliant, honestly. And I think when you make that your priority, this is where you start to thrive in life. And this is the last takeaway I want to give you, you know, it's about thriving. That's, this is probably why Deb has it. And I think I give her the word back uh, to talk a little bit about a thrive part, but I think we as human beings are built to thrive not built to survive. That's the initial part, obviously, uh, just to make sure that, you know, we don't get hit by the car. That's why we have the, the limbic brain to protect us, but we have the big, you know, big, you know, part, whether that's a soul, heart, uh, our gut, you know, to build ourselves up. And I think progress is really pro uh, per progress equals happiness, as Tony Robbins said. So I want to encourage you to keep progressing. So, Deb, any concluding thoughts you would like to uh, I think see? We have ahead? a question. I see. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, MTS. It's not a question. I was just going to say thank you so much for giving us your time and listening to us and guiding us through um, our thoughts and what we should do next. I know that the answers would only come from us, but at least you gave you've given us your guidance and your time which I appreciate a lot. And now that I'm free, you'll see more, much more of me now. <laughs> For the next month and a half, I'll be, I'll be joining more Zooms and I'll be more active on the WhatsApp group now. Um, so that will be good. So thank Very you good. so much again. Very cool. Um, yes, so thank yeah, you. You're, you're welcome, Scandi. So I think what I always like to do is ask everybody in a couple of words to say what's one thing that they're taking away with them today. Um, so who wants to start? I think it's hard. Sorry. <laughs> oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I'll go next. 
Okay, thank you. Uh, hard to say one thing. I noted a few things. Awareness, acceptance, action, like a mantra kind of uh, things. Not making a decision is a choice and not doing anything is doing. And I'm gonna, it's with me on my desk. It's gonna stay here, hopefully reassuring me uh, in this difficult, challenging times. Thank you so much for your wisdom today. In my case, it will be to make healthier choices and to do a little bit, because doing a little bit is at least a step forward rather than doing nothing at all. So that's what I'll be taking away from today. Cool. Good stuff. Sandy? So a couple of things. Um, the first one is the word courage, which I really like to champion things um, forward. And I liked the quote that Matteo used, that we're built to thrive um, and not to survive. Um, so I'll be taking that away with me. Very Thank cool. you. Very cool. So yeah, join us. The days will be the second Saturday of every month. Bring your friends. Like Matteo said, Fit Fun Life is on a mission to like, really help people begin to change their lives. Because can you imagine our world if everybody was, you know, able to be, you know, operating at 90% feeling whole and happy about who they are and how they show up. Can you imagine how different our world would be? So let's do it. And, you know, we hope you guys will come back and, um, you know, tell people about it and have them come out and join us. So thank you. And thank you, Mateo. Thank you, Deb, as well. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. Stay awesome. Stay healthy. I'll Thanks, everyone. Ready and health. Guys. See you later. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Okay, let me hit stop.